Hey guys and welcome to this new video. I know this is an extra video. Uh, this is just something I would like to show you. Now, don't confuse yourself. This is not a guide. This is not to show you the best way how to do a medium dungeon. It's to show you how I do my way of a medium dungeon. Now, in the clip, I did die once. This was not planned, as you might already know. This was not planned, of course. Never die, but um, I'm trying to rush it. But I also try to open at least every room, because the rooms give the most experience, not killing the monsters. So only kill monsters when it's necessary, and also use the gate stones to your adventure ad advantages. So, yeah, to show you the clip right now. Now, to start the video, um, yeah, I'm going to just talk about what I do in the dungeon, explaining a couple things, why I did do something, why I didn't do something and yeah you just hear me talk about 19 minutes long so um, first of all always pick up the things at the table I always pick up the extra things as well because I can sell them for some extra cash so at least in these kind of dungeons I can make um, the runes for to cure yourself uh, because they are poisonous spiders also buy a toolkit always buy a toolkit just to be sure especially if you're soloing if you're teaming, you can say like, uh, you have the highest skills, you take the toolkits, I will just be killing the monsters or something. And and even if uh, you're in a team, well, I am mostly the one with the highest skills or with the higher skills, and I always decide to be uh, the skiller. Of course, the skiller is um, only actually used in World 117. In World 148, there is actually no skiller, there's only a keyer, which well uh kind of explains for itself just picks up all the keys and in world 117 if you still go there if you're like one of the lower levels and you want to train your dungeoneering uh the skiller is the one who opens all the doors who makes armor who um fishes and cooks food for the the rest of the team so they can just kill the monsters do the boss quickly rush through the dungeon because that's actually what you're aiming for for about every dungeon not rush it but do it as quickly as possible now the difference between rushing and do it as quickly as possible is rushing you don't care about the experience you just want to get the floors out of the way or like the lower floors you want to get out of the way so you can start by doing the higher level floors uh, so rushing means don't open every room, just do the rooms which are needed to go to the boss and uh, don't make armor, don't do anything that slows down the dungeon which is not really necessary, just get the dungeon as fast as possible. Also when rushing you don't care about dying. I see some people rush and they're like no I have no food, I'm not going in that room and I'll be like why not, you're rushing, it doesn't matter if you die because it's already crap experience, you don't care about this experience. Uh, and I normally rush for 1 to 20, complexity 1, the smallest possible, um, if it's possible with some uh, friends, so it goes quicker because the dungeon w won't get harder if you're with more people on complexity 1. Uh, well, not that much harder that it forms a problem or anything. So, um, yeah, that's what I try to do. And after floor 20, I just do complexity 6 um, from 20 to 30 small dungeons solo and of course if possible with a team or with a friend uh, it's preferably to have Skype so you can talk about it don't have to time all the time because typing will slow you down um, so yeah so that's what I do to floor 30 and from 30 to 35 as you can see on screen I do the abandons to uh, medium ones uh, I don't always do this with a team, I just like soloing mediums, I don't know why, I just like having my dungeon organized, I like also never use the map for some reason, I just remember where everything is and uh, always check back on it like, did I do every room, didn't I forget anything, but yeah, I never use the map, you can also use the map, it won't cost you any experience, it will just help you with your dungeon. Uh, now don't forget, what I forgot in this dungeon is that to use your quick prayers. I always set my quick prayers to magic since I have a shadow silk hood. Let's explain something about the shadow silk hood because <laughs> I don't want th this to be a full dungeoneering guide because I already have one of those. Which is not really in depth about dungeoneering itself but more about the basics like the bosses and the binds and stuff like that. But now to get back on the shadow silk hood, uh, the shadow silk hood will protect you or make you invisible to all, to all humanoid creatures including uh, zombies, skeletons, and forgotten warriors. 
now we have the mages which will perm no, not permanently like um, for a while will uh, take down this effect meaning that when there is a mage or like a forgotten mage or a necromancer in the room you will uh, be turned visible for all humanoid creatures meaning everyone will attack you now in certain rooms especially if you have melee defense uh, armor the magic defense will be high meaning if you get in a room especially if you're in a large dungeon if you get in a room with a lot of mages it is advised to have your quick prayer set to protect from magic or deflect magic since uh, you need to turn that up most and since I have a shadow silk hood and only have to use the protection against the warriors and the rangers less than uh, the mages I have my quick prayers to magic so I hardly ever use the protect from uh, melee, the protect from range, except for bosses or if there are ha very high levels and there are no mages in the room. Um, what I also recommend is if you don't have a shadow silk hood, uh, depends on what floor you do. If you do a solo, I recommend setting your quick prayers to melee because the forgotten warriors will hit you quite hard and the mages actually don't because when you're soloing the mages and the rangers are actually a lower level than uh, the meleeers you can really make the difference now in this dungeon I got lucky with the meleeers if you have a forgotten warrior uh, from like level 120 you're pretty fucked also with a earth warrior which I got twice in this dungeon they're pretty uh, pretty tank and pretty take pretty long to take down I think I actually spent about three or four minutes taking down those through those um, two um, Earth Warriors. This dungeon took about 80 minutes in total, I believe. I'm not absolutely positive, but we will see in the end. Um, now to go explain <laughs> a couple things I did, because I'm just rambling on about random stuff about dungeoneering. And this is no dungeoneering guide, this is me showing how to do a medium dungeon. So, what I did at the start is to pick up the key at the floor and open the first door I can. I never open all the rooms in the smoker room uh, immediately now I had two rooms in the smoker room uh, this dungeon so what I did is just open one the only one I could and by coincidence there was a key which opened the second door now this was quite useful since now the smoker room is only one way um, to go if you uh, get what I mean um, the smuggler room is like you can only go one way you don't have like the the smuggler room stuck in the middle where you have like five ways uh, where you can go so that's quite kind of good for me so uh, yeah what I did is just follow uh, do any doors you can only kill the monsters if you have a guardian door uh, as you can see me doing right now do some puzzles try to finish them as quickly as possible and if you have some um, monsters hitting quite hard on you just kill them first or pray against them you don't really care um, so yeah but also make sure you don't die of course if you're watching this video you must know something about dungeoneering but don't die it will uh, cost you quite a bit of experience some people say like oh yeah it's only like fifth f um, one fifth of your experience or like ten percent well yeah but that's a lot think about it every time you go to engineering and every time you die just one um, like ten percent of all your work just be wasted like if a dungeon takes I don't know twenty minutes like two minutes of your life gets wasted just because you die or being like just saying oh it doesn't matter doesn't matter well it will matter at the end it will add up and you will lose a lot of experience so what I recommend is just do anything to stay alive of course if you're in a team especially if you're in world 148 make sure to be a little bit more aggressive if you know what I mean just go in room first they will follow you they will trust you they will be like yeah if I go in the room he will go with me so um, if you're doing a team and you don't know the team like on Skype or as friends or anything like that um, try to uh, be aggressive take the lead if, if you get what I mean it's not like waiting like oh yeah I have no food and all five people are staying at the door because people will leave believe me they will 
I've had a lot of teams where the dungeon went fine, nothing happened. At a certain point, some people didn't have any food left, and they were like, oh, I have no food left, so I have an excuse to just stand around here and not do anything. Even if I get asked, like, if you have, like, 70 agility to do a certain door, they're like, no, I'm standing good right here. Yeah, I'll just stay here, yeah. So, you'll have some people between that, so I uh, highly advise, if you can, um, bring some people on Skype, uh, if you can, some friends you already know from the front, so you know they're not going to quit or not for a reason you don't understand or anything, and uh, yeah, that's my advice, uh, use Skype and do it with friends you already know. As you can see on screen, already got to the boss. So yeah, if you just already found the boss, I always play, uh, place my gate stone at the boss, just so I can go any time I want. Actually, so um, yeah. Also, the reason why I made cosmics as well is because you can also make gate stones for yourself. Now, in large dungeon, it's quite useful to have some gates. Um, just a gate a door the key here don't have doesn't have the key from yet so when he's get he's getting the key you can say like hey I have the door bound you get the GGS or the group gate stone as, as it's also known as it's get the GGS and bring it over there um, but if you're soloing the gate stone is just helpful to get you from the one uh, one place in the dungeon to the other M most likely the far end to the other far end so you don't waste any time in the dungeon just running around and being like oh I can't do this door, I can't do that door so also try to remember what key you have and what door you still need to do and uh, where the where the doors are um, now some uh, tr uh, trap rooms, no not trap rooms, puzzle rooms where a lot of people have um, yeah some trouble going through yeah uh, we have the monolith which I'm doing right now um, well if you're soloing it's quite e easy just um, charge it some mysterious shades will pop out and they will start attacking the monolith in the top of the screen you'll see the charges of the monolith it will go up once it's completely full all the mysterious shades which are now spawned will um, die immediately and yeah you'll can cross um, you can cross the r or you can pass through the doors now some people find it hard because they'll get piled on by the mysterious shades the only thing I can say is pray range or pray magic it's the only thing you can actually do um, so that's my tips about the monolith I know it's not a full guide or anything but yeah this is just what I do to get through the monolith and another another um, uh, room some people have trouble with is either the Ramaki room or the necromancer room or no, th what was it? The necro leader, the mercenary leader. That's the one, mercenary leader. And they think it's hard because they get piled on and they have quite a low combat level, um, but they will still hit quite hard. Well, for the Ramaki, I have the um, the tip: uh, uh, kill the healer first. That's the only thi tip I can actually give you. Pray magic all the way. First, kill the healer, then the storm breacher, and. Um, uh, then kill off the meleeer and lastly the ranger because the ranger hits the lowest from all four and that's the only tip I can actually give you so and the other one the mercenary leader is just turmoil that's turmoil or piety just get it down as fast as possible get out of the room and uh, wait till the um, the minions like teleport away or something they like group gates don't teleport away but anyway uh, that's the only tips I can give you about those two rooms so yeah I hope it helped as you can see me doing on screen uh, yeah I'm switching from like a storyline a tip to um, yeah what I'm doing on screen as you saw me running past some food right there never do it you'll see at the end of the dungeon uh, it will actually cost me a death so uh, if I picked up the food I will probably have made it to the end but I died uh, so never ever leave food on the ground and be like oh I don't need it I'll just make it and be like that. Um, for engineering also a tip I can give you is uh, try to train yourself in remembering what doors are where because um, yeah it's quite useful let me when I was not that trained it's all it's not only like skill in game it's also skill for yourself being good at engineering remembering what doors are where and how to 
kill certain monsters, how to look quickly if it's a guardian door or a normal door or what skill you need for a certain door and how to make the potions remembering every potion out of your head which is quite hard believe me um, but uh, the tip I can give you train yourself in uh, seeing what door is where and also remembering it because I when I started engineering there were no guys there were no people saying like oh this is the easy, easiest way to uh, get your dungeoneering up fast. I got my dungeoneering up when it was just released. So I feel like I did it the hard way. That's what I feel like it. And now there are a lot of guides, such as this one, saying um, easy ways to train your dungeoneering fast, how to do certain um, paths and uh, different doors and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pr kind of proud of myself. As you can see right here, I'm uh, pretty much finishing up the last door, taking the last key, going to the last room, and uh, then I'm preparing for the boss. Now we're a sewing um, medium. Try not to prepare too much, to over-prepare, be like, yay, I'm gonna make some extra food and some armor and stuff like that, um, because it will slow you down. Maybe dying isn't as bad if you uh, switch it or uh, f like trade it in for like 20 minutes of preparing for a boss then rather just die and spend the 20 minutes on a next dungeon so yeah you can see me here finishing up the last room and preparing for the boss now I don't have a lot of food since I did leave some food behind which I shouldn't have done as you'll see later on in the video uh, I have some food in my inventory uh, if you want to you can fish some extra and drop all the stuff you ha had from the toolkit and also drop some runes if you really want to and again I run past the food again which it was kinda stupid but oh well uh, go to the boss now this boss you might already know he's the one who drains all your stats the unholy curse bearer um, yeah he's quite annoying um, because you have to run through the altar like every few seconds and he is quite powerful if you don't protect mage that's also the reason why I died it is because my prayer ran out now you might also find an altar in the room which is great uh, if I find an altar I hardly ever die because I have soul splits so yeah that's also quite useful and I recommend not using any um, extra prayers unless you have the prayer points if you have an altar in your dungeon definitely use piety or turmoil on this one or any other boss which you need to kill quick because otherwise it gets too powerful or you get too weak uh, such as the guy who like his defense goes up You'll have like a bar at the top which has like, yeah, the demon's defense. And then the bar goes like all to the end and you're like, what? I can never kill it. But yeah, that one also turmoil against it, piety or anything like that. And if you want to do an occult medium, um, try to, um, yeah, as, again, don't die because occults will give you a lot of experience and are hard for itself. I actually heard, well, I have a ward floor unlocked, but I've never done, actually done a ward floor. Um, but I he hear that the occult ones are harder than the warp ones. If you know, please leave me, leave me in the comment because I'm actually quite curious and I don't really feel like trying that right now since I'm doing some other stuff. And here you'll see me fatally dying and well, I now have full prayer so I'm just gonna leech defense strength and uh, attack because I am too noob to have turmoil. Because I... Um, actually didn't, uh, how do you say that, didn't um, calculate enough so I uh, only got to 92 prayer for buying the bones. Anyway, enough about that. I had the dungeon, I killed it, get 17.9k experience. It took me 18 min minutes to complete this dungeon and uh, yeah, so I did quite good. And I died once, so that's kind of a pity. Well guys, this was the end of my little tutorial. No guys, a little tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. It's not a full guide. I know I could have gone much more in depth and about the best ways to do a medium dungeon. Well, to be honest, I don't even know the best ways. I just do dungeoning for fun. Do it every now and then. This is just the way I do my medium dungeons and I hope you guys uh, learn anything from it because yeah, that's what I do. Now, I also want to thank you guys again for all the support I get from my Road to Torva guide. It's like amazing. You guys love those uh, videos and I also enjoy making them. Uh, so, I will be um, 
doing some more road tutorial videos in the future and I hope to show you my bank because it changed a lot uh, <laughs> please comment rate and definitely subscribe to be notified about any future videos and yeah goodbye